Hello, thank you so much for coming to the Sashiko live streaming. This is Atsushi, Atsushi, and <laughs> I, it's, <laughs> sorry, it's incredible that I couldn't pronounce my name. Uh, it's Thursday night, Sashiko stitching, live streaming. Uh, let me check the sound first. All right, sounds good. All right, uh, just Japanese a little bit. あ、差し込配信ご覧いただきありがとうございます。えっと、日本時間のお昼の時間は日本語ではなく英語を中心にした差し込の配信になる予定です。日本語でのコメントもあの返信ができるときはしたいと思うんですけれども、日本語の配信
enjoy the stitching itself and I do not really put so much message to the pattern um, so this one has the free running stitching so I do not really have a pattern on the fabric I just let my needles go as I feel on that day and I want to see how it's going to be the result. Um, this is my second project. I have done the same thing before. Um, but since I was not trying to make the art, or even I was not even thinking about the art back then, uh, it became like a sample of many stitches. I used many kinds of thread colors because I wanted to make a sample of colors, color samples for each such good thread on the this indigo fabric. So it became something very confusing, rather just sample and therefore this time I will focus on just running stitch. I will use only white for that. Yes, I will use only white and I will I will see how this piece is gonna be. It's the Furoshiki the Japanese wrapping cloth and there's a reason we stitched on the Froshiki uh, which is to make fabric stronger mainly there are little more stories but um, I will try to use this one as well so let's see how it's gonna be all right also uh, this is the Sashiko live streaming I hope you can bring something to stitch with me um, there's not gonna be any lectures or workshop in this live streaming I'm just talking about sashiko while doing sashiko so if you can bring something to stitch with us to share the same moment that'd be great it doesn't have to be stitching it can be knitting crochet anything that you do um, ideally while you like while you'd listen or you talk to this you know YouTube I want you to move your hands so that you can just share the same time. Whew. My my brain is still fried from the afternoon webinar. Um, regardless of the strong message I write on the Instagram or other platform um, I hope that I am communicating my core message is not exclusion I'm not excluding uh, excluding anybody from Sashiko I do not want to exclude anybody I just want to include everybody that everybody is not somebody who wants to those everybody is not only somebody who wants to try sashiko from outside it's more like the people who used to be in sashiko who are who have been in sashiko Helen thank you so much for coming and thank you so much for I, I saw you there thank you very much yeah, it, it means a lot to support slow fiber studio you know for the continuous activities for them and you know I kind of met I kind of explained that it's not gonna be extremely new uh, some of the my message doesn't change over time so easily so quickly so I try to add something at the same time the core message is not really different but I really appreciate your word that you learned something new I will follow up as well as if there is a thing. I believe that I may have scared some people out. <laughs> I don't know, but some people think that I'm super scary. Am I? I yes Instagram I write purposefully to communicate my message if I do not write like that so it is 
very interesting that some people really think that I'm scary or they feel accused even before I say something. <laughs> Does it make sense? Like, like, why are you accusing me is the something I sometimes hear from them, but I haven't said nothing. And they say, like, why are you accusing me? I said nothing. I'm just doing sashiko, you know. That, that's really interesting. I mean, English is very difficult, purely difficult language. Um, because, like, <laughs> this was my mistake. It's two years ago, three years ago, three years ago. Wow, it's 2022. Three years ago, I purely, out of my curiosity, I asked, why do you call your stitching sashiko? Uh, I was curious, very curious. Like, what's the connection between what they're stitching and Sashiko? Because I thought there was a reason behind it. There was the reason behind why they're calling it Sashiko. And some people answered me that they use the word Sashiko to market their product. Uh, one gentleman, or probably he's a dude, one dude answered me that um, by putting Sashiko into his item, uh, it sells well. Therefore, you know. He used that word, and that's a perfect answer. That's the straightforward answer. And I said, well, you know, that'd be great. But if you could learn more histories, that'd be great. You know, in addition to what he's doing, he was doing. And he said, yeah, that'd be great too. And he said, yeah, that'd be fine. That's 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 awesome. That's cool, yo, kind of thing. And I, you know, that was the end of the conversation. But some people took it that I was accusing it by saying, why do you call it Sashiko? And I learned that later that that could be the form of sort of accusation. <laughs> I have to keep learning, but I think somebody who speaks up can be scary, but I want them to know. Like I many people get surprised that I reply to DM if the DM is you know, reasonable, decent. <laughs> I'm not gonna reply to the DM, hey, what's up, what's your price, yo? I do not reply to those because it can be junk. But if I, if I receive the, you know, message introducing themselves, I do usually reply. I, it might take some time, but let me know if you have not received any reply from me, it might be somewhere. But it's interesting. <laughs> Ellen, thank you so much for clarifying. Yep. So it is difficult to hear the tone of voice in writing. And that's probably me acting. I, I learned that no matter how much I try, the reader or people who read those sentences will read what they want to read, regardless of what it's written. So if that's the case, I will cut the, those first barrier, and I want them to be able to read between, between lines. That's why my stories on Instagram or Facebook can be a little bit, you know, but many people comes back later on, like, probably he was not accusing me. And if one can look at my word as not accu accusation, what I'm saying is opposite of accusation. So, you will never please everyone. Yep, unfortunately, that's the truth. But I am idealistic. Idealist, so. <laughs> Idealistically, I like to. Uh, so, the... There are so many stories, so many questions, so many techniques, but some of them are, I have to say, it's a matter of practice. For example, well, some of them are talent. I don't want to say talent, gifted. I do not like the word gifted too much. But some of them are literally gifted. Like my mother's ability to com combine sashiko pieces into one piece is the talent. I don't think I can 
do it even if I try that. I'm looking for somebody who can do that. But those are things that. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, for Sashiko, for what I'm doing right now, anybody can do it. Anybody. Everybody can do it. Uh, if you can ride a bike, bicycle, if you can uh, drive a car, or if you can microwave something, um, that's... If you can follow some basic repetition, microwave is probably not something, I'm sorry. Uh, if you can do jump ropes, or if you can do something really repetitive, if you can do one of those, you can do such a code without any issues. You just have to sort of practice in a good format. But yeah, it's not like something that it only gifted can do. So yeah, that's that's how I'm here. What am I doing here? Yes. <laughs> so I'm not I hope I'm not scary to I mean I know I'm not scary. Well, if you are scared of me, you wouldn't come to this channel, so I feel like I have a lot of friends all over the... This is the best thing about YouTube for that. Um, I felt so lonely for a long time in Sashiko because there was something my family tried to do, protect by making it secret. They did not want to show anything outside of the family. To you know, prevent the copying, and that that makes sense. That that does make sense. You know, hiding is keeping a secret is also important way to pass down the culture. At the same time, the people inside of that culture often tend to feel solitude because there's nobody to share those passion or technique or like those moment. Um, as much as I respect that. Um, sort of the vehicle to s keep it secret, to protect. Uh, in today's world, keeping it secret is the bad idea. It, it's not the idea to make culture alive. It is opposite. The open source, kind of make it open source, is the only way to keep the culture somewhat alive. Otherwise, it's so many informations are there, so many entertainments are there. Like by paying what, like, you know, by even by paying the monthly subscription, we have unlimited access to a lot of movies right now, which was not like that before. Um, even free contents, we have more than enough content to consume even if I don't sleep, eat, or even work. <laughs> there, there are too many, too much um, entertainment information uh, choice. So technically speaking, they can get any answers from anywhere for anything. You know, this channel doesn't talk about anything political, political or anything like religious, but um, I personally believe that COVID is real. <laughs> COVID was real, but if you Google enough, there's an article saying that COVID was not real, is not real. So, I mean, you know, if you are living in the US, if you understand English, you know this better than I do. Because you are very familiar with those two-sided, you know, opinions, two-sided information. So you just follow the side you like. Um, I don't know many people who watch CNN and Fox simultaneously. Either, either one of those. Maybe. I, I'm, I'm not generalizing everything. But that was not the case for small practice like Sashiko, but because of the internet, anything can be <coughs> consumed. And if my goal is to make a small fortune in the short term, that's a kind of good thing. Because 
I can consume everything I have, and then you know, many the publicity is good for that. For that, I don't like the publicity too much. I don't believe that any publicity is a good publicity, so I try to be careful. But we have to share to protect something at this moment. Otherwise, uh, the so many information entertainment will override or overwritten, hmm? overwrite, overpaint the subtle change or subtle nuance of the practice. For that, I really appreciate, well, not only for that, including for that, I really appreciate you sharing the time here. One hour, one hour, one hour, or you know, little more than one hour every Thursday. So my voice will be alive. And this is kind of positive side of this, you know, the information world. It doesn't, I don't have to be the leader. I don't have to be a spokesman or even lobbyist to change anything. I don't. Um, before uh, the internet was available, controlling the information was very important to be powerful or to be influential you have to be able to navigate those informations or even media for that but today we cannot really control that information of course if we are talking about big media that's a different story that's a very different story but if we are talking about very small information like sashiko i don't think i can control it and nobody can control it unless they have a very big background. So I don't have to try to even control it. What I have to do is to leave those voice behind so people can find it, people can access it. You can access my voice, you can access my stitching, you can access my tutorials. And that is the way to keep the Sashiko. So, you know, I. At the end of the workshop, I always say that, but you are the future of Sashiko. I'm not the future. That's why I want you. Well, you, you are okay. You are good because you know you know pretty much everything I have to say. <laughs> I want them to understand what Sashiko can be. But yeah, it can be difficult. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I appreciate, I enjoy the my voice on NPR. That was a little strange. Even I knew the NPR. <laughs> I, I'm not really a media person, but I knew N what NPR was. So I think we pay. Like monthly donation to them. I don't, but my wife does, probably. I don't know exactly, but... but Sashiko is getting popular to the extent that NBL is gonna catch it. So... And I really appreciate them not to use my voice to validate their uh, story. I believe that they had a story already. And they contacted me to sort of um, back up what they were going to say. And, but they, you know, edited really nicely that as if their question was not that first. Their question was, uh, is it okay to share those things? It's okay, right? There's no contract or something. So their first question was that, what do I think about today's visible mending trend? And Sashiko has the technique to emphasize the visible mending. And I told her that, unfortunately, that's not the sort of sufficient explanation about Sashiko. And I always say that Sashiko is actually the word for the invisible mending. And I started, started in the interview with explaining what how insufficient it can be. Uh, it ended up with a little bit long interview, 
she said that 15 minutes is look good enough, but it ended up at totally 45 minutes or even more. But it's, you know, the voice was very well edited. I appreciate that. Yep, um, if you'd like to hear that NPR, I will try to find a link and paste it here, so I will please come back. I don't have it right now with me, so I'll edit it later on. Well, my husband said he heard a talk about the stitching you do on the piano. That was me. <laughs> that was me. And you are my friend slash student slash future. So please tell him that you'll be on the NPL in the future. If Sashiko's trend continues. <laughs> I don't know. But if it does, you know, you'll be will be the one who should be talking about those. Like the Americans were, you know, Western understanding Sashiko can be the next topic. Hello, Jade. Welcome, welcome. Uh, also, uh, there was a question in the today's webinar that uh, I think it's okay to share those questions, but there was one question was that are those Japanese artists and sashiko artisans in Japan aware of the big trend of sashiko in the US in English or even like me, my account having many followers? And the answer is no, they don't really care about those things. I don't know if they know that I have an account for that. But I think she or he said that I became influential on the Instagram or social media and yes I I started from like you know 10 people following now thank, thank you so much 50,000 but at the same time I do really not consider myself as the influential too much i really appreciate them you followers to listen to my word but i don't am i i do not consider myself as the influencer which that's the case i'm not but I mean, I don't know. I, I that's not my goal. So, but yeah, not not my my, my mother Keiko does not really know what Instagram is at this moment, so she doesn't really. She just welcomed the student she, who wants to talk to her. So, if the COVID is not here, we would be visiting Japan. Hello Sharon, thank you so much for coming. It is nice when the interview is interested in the story. Yes, um, media is scary. Sometimes they do have the article already and they just want to have a voice to validate those articles. And there's nothing wrong with that's the That's the media, so that's, you know, I'm not gonna say that's a bad thing to do, but... That's unfortunate. Probably that's the word. That's the unfortunate. Are they? Just a second. Some lack of stock. But yeah, one day. I will bring the Keiko to this live streaming or something like that. <laughs> I 
that's a, actually a good idea to bring her here I mean of course it's gonna be Japanese but that might be a good on I don't know if she likes it to be on the YouTube <laughs> she does not mind she used to be very uh, she did not like me to use her photos at all <laughs> so she did not give me the permission to use her photos again at all in 2013-14 probably you don't find anything with my mother's because it was not even it was not allowed or it, she really didn't like that idea so but I you know sort of convinced her that we have to sort of show who we are Otherwise, our voice might not be as valid as it can be. Now she doesn't mind me using the photo, but I don't know if she doesn't mind being on the YouTube. Um, I do not... well... I don't plan to bring my family to the YouTube. No. Well, unless they want to come. My mom, my wife probably does not want to come. My daughter, I don't know, but I don't ask her to be here. But my mother is, you know, sort of the part of the project, so I think she has to be somewhat public publicized. But yeah, very difficult for many Japanese people to be okay in those media. It is my job, my responsibility to collect those voices. If they don't want to be on those media, or if they don't want to be in the video taking photos, I would like to keep those voices with their photos, ideally. But not for the publication purpose. Then we can probably... You know, leave the voice again. That, that's the goal. Leave the voice. Showing a face brings a sense of connection and empathy for the student, but she should be comfortable with doing so. She doesn't, you know, think that deep. It's just the feel of shame, and we all have that in, especially in Japanese. Uh, culture, the shame is a very strong sense, so we feel embarrassed to be seen, uh, be somebody special, or be somebody standing up, stand up, stands up. Somebody who has the attention is not as a, not as good things as in the U.S. or in the Western culture. So we tend to try to be as average as we can. Yeah, I think, well, in today's today's society, showing is sort of, you have to show. I was not probably planning to show my face that much. Uh, and I was not probably, I wasn't planning to share like the stitching like this. But this showing unedited version of me stitching or talking or with face you know is the closest way to validate that I am real I mean I might be fake you know you can make any face you can make any voice out of anything at this moment so you don't know if this exists so in order to lower the lower that skeptical thinking I share everything I can at least you 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 see that you see me stitching so it's not like you know <laughs> he's talking but he doesn't stitch but this might be something very scary to say but I teach sashiko and I s do some you know the small business it's not, I don't work so hard, so it's not as busy as it should be. But 
having a business and having teaching throughout the year, I wouldn't be able to have time to stitch. Like the, this February was very busy because I had a workshop in two weeks apart. So the beginning of the February I was in Florida. In the middle of the third week of the February I was in Phoenix teaching. In between I had a little you know orders to fulfill so that I can provide a thread. I could not stitch much. Uh, I did not like that. That's why I tried to have the this march almost off so that I can stitch more. But I just wonder those if they have time to stitch if they teach. But many teachers have a big pieces, right? Big piece of stitching. <clears throat> I really wonder how they have how, well they probably they don't sleep or something. I have to sleep. But the scary thing is that Sashiko sort of communicate or represent, represent a person. So if I meet you in person, I may be able to tell you your personality or some characteristic by checking your stitches. Stitches can talk, and that's probably one of the things I have as a sort of gift or training. I don't consider myself as the best stitcher at all because you know many people criticize me when when I was a child. But one thing I can say is that I probably looked at the. Probably the most Sashiko pieces by the most people in the limited amount of time. So I I looked at Sashiko before I saw my father's face, probably, I don't remember. And I was living in this Sashiko's clothes with many people stitching around me. So there was no it was not a choice to not to even look at it. I tried my best to not to look at it, but I had to look at it. So that's probably what I had received as the gift. It was cursed, but it became. So I can tell what kind of person is stitching, and that's really interesting. No, hello. Learning balance between work life and personal life is not easy. It is not easy. And sometimes, you know, the teacher who teach crafting, they do. They do do, right? I mean, they do crafting, right? <laughs> what was the question? No. So, for example, this might be a... Hmm. So, for example, if a teacher is teaching how to paint, the teacher paints, right? Isn't my understanding correct? So the painters... The painting teacher should be able to paint, or painting teacher should or will paint frequently. As the hobby, or well, ultimately speaking, well, this might be a very difficult question. Does painting teacher have to like painting? Well, that that's gonna probably bring a lot of question. But I let's see. <laughs> There's so many kind, like the, so many choice, so many, you know, way to be somebody. So I don't want to define anything. I'm just I'm just speaking out of uh, speaking out of my. Where am I speaking out of my? I don't think now. I'm sorry. My mouth speaks before my brain. 
I finally don't translate in my brain five years ago or well of course in my in my university in my college days I always had a sentence in Japanese and then translated in my brain that was the only way to talk English speak English um, but I don't know when but I now don't really do that I speak out <laughs> I talk with thinking English in my brain so yes that's why it's really difficult to switch the language especially like today I had a webinar which I used my brain in the full speed in English so if I have to speak in Japanese right now it might be a little bit difficult because I have to switch the brain What was I talking? <laughs> I completely. What, what was I talking? Well, this is the such live stream. <laughs> what was I talking? Is I apologize. That's a as the live streaming host. What was I talking? Like a few minutes ago is not a good host. I I completely. I used to have a better short-term memory, but for some reason I lost it. Well, I know why. My, you know, being a father limited my ability to memorize something, but... And I cannot remember what I was talking, so... It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. So please keep let's keep stitching, let's keep doing something then. If you have any questions about Sashiko culture, Sashiko story, it, it can be borrowed too. Any stories, any uh, some topic or theme you want me to talk about, let me know. Learning to think in a different language is hard. I have to be careful and think about what I want to say in Japanese. <laughs> Please try. I am willing to. <laughs> All right, then I will. I will speak in Japanese next time I see you. How about that? <laughs> it's. It's really interesting. This is something really interesting, but um, the people who learn Japanese also learn sort of the Japanese mindset little by little. So they start saying that they do not speak Japanese. The more they get better in Japanese, the more they start saying that they don't speak Japanese. Um, so I kind of take it as is. Oh, you don't speak Japanese, that's fine, I can speak English. In fact, those people who say that they can speak Japanese, I have to probably speak in English. But those who think that they cannot speak Japanese tend to have very good Japanese. And you know, I still feel much, 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 much comfortable communicating Japanese, so if you, you can speak in Japanese, that's probably even better. <laughs> yeah, I might have a professor, Japanese language professor, who teaches in the college. Her conclusion of Japanese is that she cannot master it in her life because she did not spend her childhood in Japan. She's, you know, 100% I don't know 100% American doesn't doesn't make sense or not, but she she was not really related to any Japanese heritage. She decided to study Japanese later on her life, and she lives in, she lived in Japan for a long time, and she goes to Japan almost every year. Used to go to Japan almost every year. She's she's really much Japanese. So, but she said that well. 
I will never be able to speak Japanese like you because there are so many words that I cannot search in the dictionary yet everybody use as the common sense. Yeah, that's kind of true. That's really true. We there's a lot of like dial dialect. ゆっくり、ゆっくり話します。ゆっくり話します。ちょっとずつ話します。ちょっとずつじゃないな。ゆっくり話します。あ、ちっちゃちっ。Thank you for the question. When you finish stitching in there, is there any you do with the loose thread on the under side? Also, keeping on the topic of language, do you think learning the Japanese language is important to better in your sashiko? Um, the first question, I cut the, those clip off. Those, those, those tails is gonna be cut it off. You know, with using this one. I don't make knot, um, but there's a way to make stitches secure so I can cut those tails off after I complete all the stitching process. And for the language-wise, um, yes, ideally. Ideally, <laughs> Japanese language ability is going to expand your possibility of sashiko. So if you can, that's a very good um, investment if your goal is to really really you know explore in sashiko but I don't think anybody need Japanese or Japanese language to practice to enjoy sashiko like the, if the purpose is just practice to stitch to enjoy sashiko the Japanese is not necessary you know that's why I'm here that's that's the I'm here for that so it's okay to it's perfectly fine to not to be able to speak Japanese my goal is to translate everything I can that's why I share so many stories on Instagram and every, everywhere else to tell to communicate to translate that nuance that I cannot translate but if the goal is to sort of deepen the understanding of sashiko yes it is very almost extremely important to be fluent in Japanese uh, this might raise a lot of questions and this might be this might sound like some accusation which I do not mean to but if they think they are master of sashiko or professional of sashiko or even teacher of sashiko I want them to be able to communicate in Japanese they don't have to be fluent but there are a lot of cultural perspective cultural mindset very different things associated to the Japanese language which the Japanese people don't know because they do not speak in English for example, I say that I am not worried about sashiko in Japanese at all, no matter how drastic it changes in Japan. And many Japanese people say that that's wrong. My statement that I don't have to worry about sashiko in Japan is wrong. They ask me to speak up what is the sort of right or authentic sashiko. So, but they do not see the difference between the people who think they know about sashiko and also those people who understand Japanese ordinarily as the Japanese ordinarily. And there's a significant gap between the American ordinal not American, I'm sorry, the Western ordinarily and the Japanese ordinarily. And the ordinarily is please translate as the expectation. So it's it's very very interesting. <laughs> For example, this is this is probably the best example. Um, in America, in the U.S. culture, asking a question is the things you have to do. Ask you have to ask a question to show the respect. 
uh, I could not get the good grade sometimes in my university because I did not ask a question as much as the professor wanted me to. And asking a question is the sign of your interest to the topic. And asking a question means that you are actively participating in the, to the discussion. So, you know, that's a sign of respect. It is true, and it's true in the American culture. It's not in Japan. If it's the academic setting in the school, yes, uh, asking a question can be okay. At the same time, in the another setting, asking question can be the last thing you would like to do because it can take up somebody's time. So that's the different expectation. Uh, something you can look up or something you can research by yourself you probably shouldn't ask somebody else because that could end up with taking somebody's time uh, and that's not logical at all that's not really practical because it's better to you know answer those questions in one second rather than asking like it takes the same amount to answer the question saying so for example what kind of what is the good question Uh, how long your sashiko needle is? That's a very fr fr frequent question. Uh, that's a very frequent question, and my answer can be 51.5 millimeter. That's one sentence. It's shorter than, please look up my website. There's information available there. So navigating them is more time-consuming than actually giving them the answer. But giving them the answer does not mean the good thing in our culture because that could filter the information. <laughs> so they, I want them to understand why it is 51.5 millimeter as well. So, and that that's probably... I am trying to explain those subtle things in English in my platform at the same time if you if somebody can communicate with Japanese people in Japanese language you you will be surrounded by teachers because everybody every Japanese who you probably interact with are those people who thinks the Japanese ordinary is the everybody's ordinary expectation <laughs> I really wanted to go to Japan one day, but we are the people who apologize for having the bullet train, which moves, you know, more than 200 kilometer per hour, which is 160 miles per hour, more than that, for like Tokyo to Kyoto, which is what, I don't know how long it is, but it's quite long distance, probably New York to Philly, probably three hours or so. Anyway, so we are the people who apologize being late by one minute for that long travel. The uh, the captain. <laughs> we don't say captain, right? We do, we say that um the who is the <laughs> the driver or the blood train conductor of the blood train make announcement at the end of the every time they go to the station they make announcement like this is the Shinjuku, this is the Shizuoka, blah 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 if they do not arrive the station on time as it's said they will most likely to apologize if they are late by 10 minutes that's a super big deal so and that's not the expectation in the US. That's a different expectation. So there are a lot of different things here and there. And learning the language is one very good way to learn the difference. And that learning the difference will probably make your sashiko more sort of Japanese, I guess. So for that, 
such a cool, I mean, Japanese may be good investment if you are planning to be the master of sashiko or something like that. But it's not necessary. There are more important things than language. I hope it makes sense. I hope it makes sense, but at the same time, I know it does not make sense well. Um, I used to think that one does not speak Japanese will probably not get the core or the essence of Sashiko. I used to think like that. Because we are so different, I thought that it would be almost impossible to share those things. Um, but my student proved me wrong. They can. And they don't speak Japanese as long as I know. And they got it very well. They, they proved me wrong. They can get the core essence of Sashiko even without having the Japanese language. Yes, it can mean that I'm a good teacher, but at the same time, I think it's just a matter of willingness to learn. Japanese culture doesn't want to inconvenience other people or cause problems for the community. Yes. <laughs> See? You, you know why I don't fit in there, right? I am the very excited. I am the... I am... As, as much as you might think that I'm Japanese difficult person, I am more like free side. I am more westernized than the Japanese people you might see in the future. But they're bad. <laughs> I don't know if it's okay to say they're bad, but they are. I, mean, I, I, it's, I love Japanese culture, I love Japanese, I respect them, but that can be sometimes too much. Bothering somebody's time is... It's really bad. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a funny story. But like when I had a business in Japan, um, since I was working in the Sashiko industry, many people were outdated, not outdated, I'm sorry, many people were not following the internet back then. Well, it was already 2007 or 8, so we used the internet. The email was everywhere and we used those emails, but some people, like my father, <laughs> did not use the in internet much. So instead of the internet or emails, what they used was the fax. <laughs> and many people used fax to communicate back then. Uh, there was the gentleman who used the fax to ask if it's okay to call you. That's a little too much. But fax is better than phone call because it does not ring. Which means probably wrong, but it rings only once, right? The fax, it says that it received fax, but it does not keep ringing to bother somebody who might be in different phone call. So he... <laughs> He wrote me like handwriting message like, is that okay to call you right now? Am I supposed to return the fax or just call you? Then I have to think. But that that's how I don't know. It's probably how I don't want to say bad, but bad. So yeah, I'm really, if you are still single, I do not recommend marrying to Japanese man. I cannot talk on behalf of Japanese women because I am not, but I, for Japanese, uh, not, I do not recommend. Well, I mean, my wife can talk probably better about that, but... <laughs> yeah. 
let me I shouldn't bring her here but she can probably have her 24 hours of live streaming if she can talk about those things but it's really different and different in the interesting way but what kind of vegan married to Japanese it was very interesting my wife was a vegan once I do respect and I want a vegan, but come to think of that, we eat everything flying. We eat pretty much everything moving for that matter. Do we eat any do we we pretty much eat everything moving, right? No. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, the vegan is kind of far far from that. Well, of course, there are many vegans in Japan right now, but 10 years ago, not so common choice. But I do, I do respect her choice. Now, she takes dairy, but unfortunately, she doesn't eat meat or fish. I respect her choice. But I don't think she can take me eating the alive octopus. Well, let's see. <laughs> One of the restaurants I liked when I was in Japan is the... There's a restaurant where you can fish the fish. There's a little sort of the... How do you call it? Not aqu aquarium kind of aqu aquarium and you can use the fishing rod and you fish that specific fish you would like to eat and then they cook it for you in <laughs> the kitchen so yep that might be a little bit too much but that's you know it's the cultural thing there's no right and wrong I, I. <laughs> See, those are the stories I can talk top of Sashiko. I don't think it's necessary, but... Whew, almost one hour. I cannot believe that time flies when you do Sashiko. Or even any kind of crafting for that, I guess. Do you feel the same that the time flies when you stitch or when you do sashiko? I have one kind of hypothesis, hy hypothesis, hypothesis. Hy there are many energetic sashiko people who is like age of 80 or 90 as young as you know 60 or 50 like they're extremely fresh young energetic and i was wondering why why those people who enjoy sashiko are so energetic you know we don't really do the exercise this is not exercise so it's not good for your body but many people were so energetic and I kind of came to the hypothesis, hypothesis, hyp I cannot say that word, hypothesis, hypothesis. <laughs> you probably cannot say that today, throughout today, but yeah, I came to one theory. Probably, when we stitch, our body, our brain misunderstands the flow of time. So let's say that I am stitching for one hour right right now i am stitching for one hour but my body just understand that it was only five minutes so although it has passed one hour in my reality of my body it's just only five minutes so <laughs> if i stitch 10 hour i will be 10 years old no, 10 hours, 10 hours old, right? After st stitching for 10 hours, I'll be 10 hours old. But because I was stitching for 10 hours, 
I only aged 5 multiplied in 15 minutes makes sense I mean it's crazy but we don't know how body understand the time as the result by accumulating those differences uh, counting wise we get old but our body our brain doesn't get old as the time we don't stitch it's a crazy idea but and there's no scientific proof but that might be it <laughs> if so sashiko is the way to be young in the future but I mean, that's a crazy theory that I sometimes make fun of it, make a joke out of it, but it is true that it, we feel really differently when we stitch. Uh, time flies differently. Or from a near the needy point of view, we reduce stress by stitching so our cholesterol goes down and our health improves. That might be more scientific explanation. Yes, probably so. Every time I stitch, time goes by much faster than I think every time. See, like that, that's, you know, that, that, that might be a little bit more Heidegger philosophy-ish, but time exists because we think it's a time. <laughs> we make sure the time is like clicking by checking the clock. Of course, we can check the time by, what, what, by checking outside, but our body count time by itself. So maybe, <laughs> maybe that might be Bo both. The Sharon's saying like we get healthier because of the relaxation. At the same time, we might be bending, bending the, this dimension. <laughs> it's, it's you know we think a lot when we stitch, and that's one of the craziest and stupid ideas. So. Please don't be serious about it. But that that's one thing. You know, one thing to maybe. Because many people are so energetic after the they the one of the what I'm saying is that um sixty years old is just a baby, it's a shiko. Sixty years old. Seventy years old, well, you know, you're somewhat young. In Sashiko, 80 years, then you can start teaching others, but not the master. 90 years, well, probably you have to go soon, so you can't probably call yourself master. 100 years, good to go, you know, <laughs> you are good enough, so you can keep stitching, that's great, probably you might want to wear something else. Well, that's a joke that they're making it, but I don't think it's really 100% a joke. That's how the little Sashiko requires to be good. You can literally start at the age of 70 and become the top of Sashiko field if you want to. You can. It's not. Anybody can start at any age. That's another reason I don't want my daughter to start. I want her to go challenge something that she can. She can do when she is young first. Uh, she can do sashiko at the age of you know, 60 or 70. If the 60 is a baby, I must not even be a cell yet at the age of 16. Yes, you're not. <laughs> They're not. I was... You know, they made fun of me for that because they were 60s, 70s, 80s, and I was like, what, 10? <laughs> well, it's a very nasty joke, but he was like, I went ask, what am I? And he said, well, you're probably one of those in your father's body. That's a nasty thing, but that's <laughs> how little I was in the family business. So, wait, are you 60? No. Uh, 
I also said that I don't want to teach my daughter Sashiko. Starting Sashiko in early age is also good too. I don't want to make a like it's. I'm sorry, it's a misunderstanding. I don't want to create so any understanding of life can be part of good Sashiko. So the fact that I hated Sashiko so much is a very important part of my Sashiko. So I would like everybody to experience outside of Sashiko, so it's gonna be the part of Sashiko in the future. I hope it makes sense. And there's no age to too early to start or too late to start in Sashiko. Do their hands hold up to years of stitching? Yeah, they do. Um, well, we don't really use... Yeah, their hands were not clean, though. Um, you know the working hand. They... The majority of Sashiko artisans are not really the artisans who work 12 hours per day for Sashiko stitching. Um, they are not really the artisans for artisans. <clears throat> um, usually they are farmers over summer and they work for they worked for us over the winter when they did not have any farming work to do. So their hand was very like work hand and I really like that <laughs> they made fun of my f hand as like you know baby hands because I didn't do any you know farming job but well they did not see their stitching they did not really have to worry about threading the needle because they probably not they were not using the eyes so much. Probably the hand memorize it. But yeah, that's a very interesting story and I really consider hmm, how can I say that? Anybody, like literally anybody can start Sashiko at any age. And that's a joke, or it might not be a joke, but that's the story where what my artisans were sharing with me to make fun of me, to make fun of me, that's the whole point. But that's not really a completely a joke. There is, you know, I don't like this phrase to be used too often, but there is nothing wasteful, nothing meaningless in our life. Uh, true, I do not like to use it as the excuse to not to reflect ourselves, but it is very true in Sashiko because all of the things we experience can be part of our stitching because our stitching stood representing who we are. When we don't focus on the result and some people like my stitching better than the others or some people might dislike my stitching because of some strong messages but then not a message more like a personality um, you may find somebody's stitching more calming than mine you may find my stitches pretty difficult that's a very that's a very fair evaluation, so it's perfectly fine to do that. But I won't... If we can talk like this, if we, if we can kind of come to the mutual understanding of what I'm talking about right now, then we don't worry about the size of stitches. Like, like that's not really the topic. Like, what's up? To, like, what happened to you today by looking at somebody's stitches is the topic. Oh, my stitches are so accurate. It's really not going to be the first topic to discuss. Wow, your stitches are so tight. 
did you have any issues with your family? So those are more like the the principle. That's the core. That's the essence of such I'd like to share. So it is really important to be able to control the needle. It is really important to have the even stitches, uh, but it's not the everything that a sashiko can do. Okay, so it has been 75 minutes. I don't think I can share whole picture of this right now, so I will take a photo again and upload it. I will probably, not a probably, I will keep stitching on this one uh, tomorrow in the Japanese live session too. But um, the whole picture is now on the Instagram. The whole picture is on the Instagram right now. Uh, it's it's before this stitching, so it's probably a little bit different from what I did today. But I will keep updating how it's gonna be like in the future. But this is the sort of sashiko. Not a sort of. This is the sashiko furoshiki wrapping cloth. Uh, it's the almost a meter square. Uh, we call it the mihaba. Uh, three. <laughs> the length of three kimono fabric, mihaba. So we kind of combine. There's a specific width of the kimono fabric so that they don't have to cut more than necessary. And they, that's the only width they had back then. So when they make those wrapping clothes, the square, they try to combine. No, the patchwork together. Uh, this is the size of mihaba. Mihaba means like three width of that kimono. So it's not exactly 100%, it's, it's not exactly uh, one meter square, but that's the size. And I did not um, draw any line, I'm just letting it go. And then you don't even worry about the stitches size. It's a really different stitches than this one. It's both from mine. I, I stopped doing it here because it's a little bit troublesome. But this is more like following the patterns. And this is more like... I don't even remember where I was stitching today because I focused on talking. Is it a sampler of patterns and free form too? Ah, just a second, okay. Is it a sampler of patterns and free form too? Sorry, Sharon, I did not understand your question. This is the big piece. These are two different pieces, one here and then one here. It's two different pieces. It's too big to cover myself. All right. Um, if you're watching this as the archive, and if you have questions about Sashiko culture, Sashiko story, Sashiko theme, topics, please leave the comments so I can probably cover it in the next live streaming, which is the next Thursday. And I hope you had a good time. Thank you so much for coming here for the Thursday night. Sorry. Mm. Ooh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming for the Thursday night such a live streaming. Um, I hope this time can create a sort of a space for us to stitch together. I don't say anything specific. It's not summarized. It's not a message-wise. It's more like me mumbling. Uh, some of the brainstorming or some of the raw materials that I might use for my presentation in the future a uh, very fragment of information. At the same time, if we can share those stories, um, we can probably pass down Sashiko in original form. Uh, one of the Japanese friends told me that this is like a 
place. This is like old house where the grandma is stitching on the like outside chair. And you're visiting that house for the summer or for the weekend. And I, I like that. I like it to be like that. Um, I Anybody can come, anybody can join the stitching, uh, but I'm kind of too old to not to speak, so I keep mumbling. I don't really know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to the fabric and to you and sharing something like, you know, something very important, but not critical. <laughs> something important, but subtle at the same time. All right, so I hope I can come. Not I hope I, I hope you can come back next Thursday as well, and I will be here uh, next Thursday as well. All right, thank you very much for coming, and have a good night.